I've heard so much about you. Feels like we've already met. I've heard a lot about you too, my Ling. Season one and season two, you never see my Ling around women. That energy is lacking in my life. So when Atoy and Myling meet, it's not necessarily two cats kind of clawing at each other. There's a bit of ice, and I believe the point of that scene was to establish respect. Atoy's used to walking around like the Empress. Now there's another woman who holds that title, and even though they do very different things, neither of these women is accustomed to being the one who blinks first. In the end, Atoy does bow low to Myling. And that was hard for me because it feels like a submission to someone you don't want to submit to. At the same time, Atoy didn't get where she is now without knowing when the time to strike is and when the time to play the game is. Today, it's time to play the game. What's interesting about Assam and Penny is that they never really had resolution to their relationship, and now they've both been thrust in these very sort of practical leadership roles in their separate businesses, so they're meeting on different but equal terms again, and it's really complicated for them because they know they can't be together, they both have very different interests, and yet there's this thing between them underneath the surface that they can't quite ignore, and so there are these moments where it pops out and, and it kind of makes you think like, well, maybe these two could find that, but in this world, they're never gonna find it. How are you these days? Well, you know, same old shit. Penny is doing her thing, becoming her own woman, and Sam's on his mission. So they're not in a place where it's like, oh, let's try and be in a relationship. I gotta do this, you gotta do this, and that's it. You haven't changed at all. You have, but you're still you. There's this connection, this unspoken connection that just hasn't gone away. I love the writing because it was so subtle. At no point did they say, oh, by the way, Penny and Assam, they make eye contact or they try and touch each other. It's like nothing. They're talking about business. But we, we all collectively knew that frisson, that sort of closeness, it's all there and it's thrilling. What are you doing here? There's a back entrance to my father's factory. I told you, Mercer Steel isn't our first choice. The guards won't be watching it because they don't know about it. I'm coming with you. Sophie's decision to blow up Mercer Steel comes straight after an argument that she has with her sister, in which she's tried to reach out to her sister and provide support because of a fight between Blake and Penny, and her sisters basically pushed her away and told her that she contributes nothing and she does nothing. You've never worked a day in your life. Never finished a single thing you started. Who are you helping? Sophie decides to do something, and she goes straight to Larry and says, OK, I know a secret way to mass a seal, and this is something that I can do that will actually have an impact. It's really hard for Larry not to step outside of the law in order to try to get things done, because especially when you're dealing with corruption and greed, you kind of have to become that somewhat. Leary starts taking extreme measures because in his mind he can see the beginning of the end, you know, because nothing is really changing and nothing's getting any better. In fact, it's becoming worse, actually. You're seeing Leary at the point where he's actually becoming something of a labor terrorist planting bombs in factories that employ Chinese labor. Things are really being stirred to a boil. No! Oh! 